So let us talk about satellite communications and wireless networking in this uh, satellite communications. So we'll see the basics of satellites, the type of satellites and the capacity allocation. How do satellite work? So two stations on earth want to communicate through radio broadcast but are too far away to use conventional means. One station is this, one station is this. They want to communicate but they are so far that they cannot talk in any manner. So two stations can use a satellite as a relay station for their communication. So we have satellite here and now this can be taken or this can be employed as a relay station for their communication. One earth station sends a transmission to the satellite and this is called uplink. Sends a transmission which is called uplink and the satellite transponder this converts the signal and sends it down to the second earth station and this is called the downlink. This is the transponder. It sends it back again to the second or the receiver and this is called the downlink. So the advantages of satellites, the advantages of satellite communication over terrestrial communication are the coverage area of satellite greatly exceeds that of a terrestrial satellite because of the height on which the satellite is operating and transmission cost of a satellite is independent of the distance from the center of the coverage area. Then the satellite to satellite communication is uh, very precise and higher bandwidths are available for use. But there are certain disadvantages of satellites as well. Means first of all, launching a satellite into our orbit is a costly affair and satellite bandwidth is gradually becoming used up. And there is a large propagation delay in satellite communication than in terrestrial communication. As you see, you transmit and then receive. So all this lag, all this delay can be an issue. So factors which are there or affecting satellite communication. First of all, you have elevation angle. The angle of horizontal of the earth surface to the center line of the satellite transmission beam. Right? The angle of the horizontal of the earth means if, uh, I'll show you with the diagram. Uh, the center line of the satellite transmission beam, this is the elevation angle. This is the elevation angle and this affects the satellite's coverage area. Ideally, you want an elevation angle of 0 degree so the transmission beam reaches the horizon visible to the satellite in all directions. However, because of various factors like environmental ob uh, factors like object blocking of transmission, atmospheric attenuation, and the earth electrical background noise there is a minimum angle or elevation angle of earth stations right now this is the satellite this is the earth station so with the horizontal to the angle which this is making with the transport or the satellite this is the elevation so it actually it has to be zero but no it cannot be because of various reasons. The factors in satellite communication that is continued on top, there is a coverage angle. The measure of the portion of the Earth's surface visible to a satellite, taking the minimum elevation angle into account. This is uh, a relationship of R by R plus H. This R is Earth radius and H is the satellite orbit height. Beta is the coverage angle and theta is the minimum elevation angle. This is the relationship of coverage area. There are other impairments to satellite communication also. The distance between an earth station and a satellite that is free space loss. Because there has the communication is unguided. Right? So the transmission goes to the atmosphere. Now there are various losses which can happen. 
these are free space loss. Then satellite footprint. The satellite transmission strength is strongest in the center of the transmission and decreases farther from the center as free space loss decreases. And atmosphere attenuation caused by this air and water can impair the transmission. This is particularly bad if you are in amidst rain and fog. So amid rain and fog, the transmission is particularly uh, bad. How satellites are used? There are various types of service you can take. First of all, fixed service satellite. For example, point-to-point -point communication, broadcast service satellite, that is satellite television and radio, also called as direct broadcast service and mobile and service satellite that is MSS. For example, satellite phones. Now the types of satellites we have geo. Leo, Mio, Molly orbit, HAPs, these are the satellite orbits and various frequency bands. Geostationary satellite, these satellites are in orbit 36,000 km from the Earth's surface along the equator. This is the precise one. So, objects in geostationary orbit revolve around the Earth at the same speed as the Earth rotates. Right? So this is Earth and this is revolving. This is a straight line. So it revolves in the same time as the Earth rotates. So this essentially remains uh, known or available to that position always, you know, 24 7. So this means your satellites remain in the same position relative to the surface of the Earth or the user. Advantages. Geosatellite distance from Earth gives it a large coverage area, around 40% coverage, almost a fourth of the Earth's surface. And geosatellites have a 24 hour view of a particular area because, uh, you know, essentially they are stagnant. Means for a user, they are always seen. And these factors make it ideal for satellite broadcast and other multi point applications. But the disadvantages are the geosatellite distance also cause it to have both a comparatively weak signal and a time delay in the signal which is bad for point-to-point -point communication. Because very far, this is 36,000 kilometers, so there will be a lag, there will be a weak signal when it reaches. And uh, geosatellites centered above the equator have difficulty broadcasting signal to polar regions. Now LEO. LEO satellites are much closer to the Earth than GEO, ranging from 500 to 1500 km, rather 1600 km above the surface. So, LEO satellites don't stay in fixed position relative to su surface and are only visible for 15 to 20 minutes in each pass. A network of LEO satellites is necessary for LEO satellite to be actually useful. The advantages are Leo satellites proximity to Earth compared to geosatellites gives it a better signal strength and less time delay which makes it better for point-to-point -point communication. And Leo satellites smaller area of coverage is less of a waste of bandwidth. But what are the disadvantages of Leo? Network of Leo satellites is needed. One will not cover because if you want Geo, Geo covers 40% of the Earth. So you need uh, around 4 to 5 geo to cover all the earth but leo you need more than that uh, which is costly so leo satellites have to compensate for doppler shifts uh, caused by their relative movement and atmospheric drag affects leo satellites causing gradual orbital deterioration because uh, geo is in vacuum almost out of space but this leo they are inside they are inside our atmosphere then comes the MEO. MEO satellite is in orbit somewhere between 8000 km to 18000 km. Above the Earth's surface, MEO satellites are similar to LEO satellites in functionality. MEO satellites are visible for much longer period of time than LEO satellite, uh, usually 2 to 8 hours. So, MEO satellites have a large coverage area than LEO satellites, but lesser than our GEO. The advantage of MEO satellites, MEO satellites longer duration of 
visibility and wider footprints means fewer satellites are needed in a MU network than a LEO network and disadvantages. A MU satellite distance gives it a longer time delay and weaker signal than LEO satellites, though not as bad as GEO satellite. Then we have Molyus orbit satellites. These are used by Russia for decades. Molly orbit is an elliptical orbit, not circle, elliptical orbit. The satellite remains in a nearly fixed position relative to Earth for 8 hours. 8 hours fixed position. A series of 3 Molly satellites can act like a geo satellite. So this is useful in near polar region. Then we have high altitude platform. So one of the newest idea in satellite communication is high platform or high altitude platform. A blimp or plane around 20 km above the surface is used as a satellite. Now HAPEs would have very large, small coverage area but would have a comparatively strong signal. This is cheaper to put in position but would require a lot of them in a network. Okay. Now there are frequency bands. So different types of different kinds of satellite use different frequency band. L, S, C, X, Q, K, K, L band 1 to 2 gigahertz, to S 2 to 4 gigahertz, C 4 to 8, X, X to 12.5, and these are the work which are given. Q band 12.5 to 18, K 18 to 26.5 gigahertz. And 26.540 is Ka. There are capacity location while uh, communication. This is FDMA and TDMA. FDMA satellite frequency is already broken into bands. This FDMA is frequency division multiplex and uh, this multiple axis frequency division multiple axis. So satellite frequency is already broken into bands and is broken into smaller channels in frequency division multiple axis. So overall bandwidth within a frequency band is increased due to frequency reuse. A frequency is used by two carriers with orthogonal polarization. So the number of subchannels is limited by three factors. Thermal noise, too weak a signal will be affected by background noise. An intermodulation noise means too strong a such signal will cause noise. Crosstalk is cause of excessive frequency reuse. So FDMA can be performed in two ways, pharma and dama. Pharma is fixed assignment multiple axis and dama is demand assignment multiple axis. The fixed uh, demand or fixed assignment uh, multiple axis the sub channel assignments are of fixed allotment, so ideal for broadcast satellite communication. While DAMA demand assignment multiple axis, the sub channel allotment changes based on the demand, so this is ideal for point to point communication. Then coming to TDMA time division multiple axis, uh, TDMA breaks a transmission into multiple time slots, so each one dedicated to a different transmitter. Uh, TDMA is in increasingly becoming uh, very uh, widespread in satellite communication and TDMA uses the same technique as FDMA does, PHARMA and DUM. So what are the advantages of TDMA or FDMA? Digital equipment used in time division multiplexing is increasingly becoming cheaper. And there are advantages in digital transmission technique like very good error prediction now and the lack of intermodulation noise means increased efficiency. This was a basic idea about the satellite communication and satellites. Thank you so much. Take care.